Welcome back ladies and gents. In this particular teaching video, I'll be looking at 2.5, the discriminant. 2.5 represents chapter 2, section 5 of the Pearson A-Level Maths, Pure Maths Year 1 textbook. Okay, so I'm going to start this teaching video with the function f of x, which represents a quadratic. So we have f of x equal ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b and c are constants and a is not equal to zero. Okay, so I've got a function f of x which represents a quadratic. What does it mean by the roots of f of x? Well, the roots of f of x is just the solutions of f of x equal to zero. Okay, so I've got my function f of x, I'm setting it equal to zero. There you have it. This implies that ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. The solution of this particular quadratic equation is therefore x equal minus b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now the b squared minus 4ac, which is inside the square root, has an important name. It is called the discriminant of your quadratic function. So we have that b squared minus 4ac is the discriminant, keyword, of the quadratic function. Okay, so we know that this particular quadratic formula is the solution to this quadratic equation. We have three scenarios. Scenario number one, two distinct roots. So when you see that in the exam, two distinct roots implies that the discriminant has to be greater than zero. Graphically, we have the following representations. A is greater than zero, U-shape. A is less than zero, upside down, U-shape. Because the discriminant is greater than zero, Graphically, we will have two x-intercepts, as you can see over here. Okay, scenario number two. Equal roots or repeated roots. When you see this particular wording in the exam, straight away this implies that the discriminant is equal to zero. Graphically, we have the following representations. So a is greater than zero, u-shape. a is less than zero, upside down, u-shape. If the discriminant is equal to zero, we have that the curve will touch the x-axis at a single point, as you can see over here. Third scenario, no real roots. So in the exam, if you have no real roots, this implies that b squared minus 4ac is less than zero. So graphically, we have the following representations. a is greater than zero, u-shape, a is less than zero, upside down, u-shape. Because the discriminant is less than zero, if you go back to the quadratic formula, you can't take the square root of a negative, hence there are no solutions. Therefore, there will be no x-intercepts. The curve will be either above the x-axis or below the x-axis. So these are the three scenarios. Let's have a look at some exam style questions. Question number one, find the values of k for which x squared plus 6x plus k equal to zero has two real solutions. So the key statement in this particular question is has two real solutions. So two real solutions implies that b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero. Now we need to read off our a, b and c for this quadratic. So the a is the coefficient of x squared which is one the b is the coefficient of x, which is 6, and the c is the constant term, which is k. Now I'm going to substitute 1, 6, and k into this particular inequality. So this implies that 6 squared minus 4 multiplied by 1 multiplied by k has to be greater than 0. So we have that 6 squared is 36, minus 4 multiplied by 1 multiplied by k is 4k. 
this has to be greater than zero. So what we've done now is generated a linear inequality in K. We have to solve this particular inequality. So I've got minus 4K is greater than minus 36. The next step is to divide both sides by minus 4. And so when we do that, we have to flip the inequality. So this implies that K has to be less than 9. So this quadratic equation has two real solutions for k being less than 9. Okay, therefore k is less than 9. Question 2. Given that the function f of x equal sx squared plus 8x plus s has equal roots, find the value of the positive constant s. So the key statement over here is has equal roots. So equal roots implies that b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0. So now what we need to do is read off the a, b and c for this quadratic. So the a is the coefficient of x squared, which is s. b is the coefficient of x, which is 8. And c is the constant term. In this case, it is s. OK, so now we're going to substitute a, b and c into this particular equation. So if I do this, I get 8 squared minus 4 multiplied by s multiplied by s equals 0. So now if I clean this up, I'll end up with 64 minus 4s squared equal to 0. All I need to do now is rearrange and make s the subject. So I've got minus 4s squared is equal to minus 64. So we have s squared is equal to 16. And then finally, we must take the square root. But when you take the square root, you must include the plus or minus. OK, so s is equal to plus or minus square root of 16, which is 4. Therefore, we have that s is equal to 4 or minus 4. For these two values of s, this particular quadratic function will have um, equal roots. And that there solves question 2. Let's have a look at question 3. The straight line with equation y equal 3x minus 7 does not cross or touch the curve with equation y equal 2px squared minus 6px plus 4p, where p is a constant. Show that 4p squared minus 20p plus 9 is less than 0. OK, let's try and understand the question graphically. So I've got a straight line with positive gradient, which is 3. Then I've got a curve. The shape of the curve depends on the coefficient of x squared. If that coefficient of x squared is greater than 0, we would have a u shape. So let's have a look at the u shape. Now that u shape will not cross or touch the line. So the u shape will be somewhere here. If the coefficient of x squared was less than 0, we would have an upside down u shape. That upside down U shape does not cross or touch the line, so it would be somewhere over here. So you could have this scenario or this scenario. In both scenarios, there is no touch or cross between the line and the curve. OK, so how do we proceed with the question? How do we end up with this particular inequality? It's not too bad, ladies and gents. What you need to do is set the line equal to the curve. Once you've done that, you take everything to the left-hand side, get your quadratic equation in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equal to 0. Once you've got that quadratic equation, you work out the discriminant, and that discriminant has to be less than 0 because there is no touch or cross between the line and the curve, no solutions. OK, so let's start off by setting the line equal to the curve. I'm going to take everything to the left hand side. I can keep the x squared term as it is, collect the x terms, collect the constant terms. Over here I can factor out an x. 
So inside the bracket, I can put 6p plus 3. I can rewrite this as plus, in brackets, minus 4p minus 7. Then we've got equals 0. So I've got a quadratic equation in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equal to 0. Because there is no cross or touch between the line and the curve, we know that for this quadratic equation, the discriminant has to be less than 0. So let's read off the a, b, and c first. So the a is the coefficient of x squared, that's minus 2p. The b is the coefficient of x, which is 6p plus 3. And the c is the constant term, minus 4p minus 7. So no touch or cross implies that b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. So now I'm going to substitute my a, b, and c into this inequality. So I need to expand and simplify this so that I end up with this beautiful result. Okay, so I can open up this into double brackets. Minus 4 multiplied by minus 2p is positive 8p. So if I expand this bracket, I get the following. And if I expand this bracket, I get the Okay, so... If I now simplify this, my final result will be precisely this over here. So I've got 4p squared minus 20p plus 9 is less than 0. And that there is what I needed. Okay? Absolutely brilliant, guys. When you get to this end point, you feel, you feel amazing. Like, what an achievement. Okay, so that there completes question 3. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to subscribe.